Hello, Time here. I was hoping this year I would have more time to upload videos on tutorials for Seamless, sharing some of my ideas and vlogging what I've been up to, but disappointingly too much of my time has been robbed by unexpected events that demanded my attention. Since uploading my last video in autumn, we've gone through the winter. How's it going, little Amy's? How's it going? How's it going, little doggy? <laughs> it's cold, isn't it? It's bloody cold! Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> I spent most of the cold winter mornings huddled over a fire getting Seamless to be able to deal with a wide range of scenarios when diverting a control line. The code that had to deal with all the different scenarios was so vast that it seemed impossible to hold it all in my head at one time. So I tried to focus my attention on only one issue at a time. But the problem with this was fixing the code that dealt with one scenario would typically break the code for another. After months of revisiting different portions of code and simplifying much of it, I was eventually able to understand enough of it to make fixes that did not cause problems elsewhere. So the code I created that once felt like a monster now feels a lot more friendly and understood. Getting it all to function how it should has taken much longer than I had hoped. But I realised last year that getting Seamless to be able to deal with all the different scenarios when diverting a control line was going to be one of the biggest challenges facing me if I wanted Seamless to allow the artist to be able to experiment in making their own NURB structures. So if, for example, the artist wants to make a structure for some type of animal head, they won't be dependent on a tutorial for making a structure well suited for that type of head. See the link for downloading the new version 3.003 below the video in the description. The new version indicates the direction of the line being inserted by this arrow. The direction affects how a line is diverted. Same as with previous versions of Seamless 3D3, when clicking to start the line, if you click the edge you want the line to begin from, the direction of the line will be set running to the opposite edge. With the new version, if you click away from the edge to start the line, you can change the direction after releasing the mouse button by moving the mouse in the desired direction. To feel at home with this, play with inserting lines, setting their direction and diverting them. We had no fewer than three major leaks this year in our water pipes that bring the water from our house dam to our garden and the troughs for the animals. You're not going to lick me when I go to bend down to turn this uh, tap off, are you? Because I don't like dog lick, especially when you've been eating dead animals. Did the wings. Don't like the dog lick when you've been eating dead animals. One of the leaks was so bad, it caused us to lose most of our dam water in a matter of days, which was a worry to discover going into the winter, as we tend not to get a lot of rain through the winter and the spring that follows, which is a time we need it most. Because the pipe had stopped siphoning, I tried to get it back siphoning again from the remaining water left in the dam so that I could locate the leaks, but it seemed the water was too low in the dam for it to be able to siphon up the pipe any more. After digging up all the pipe near the dam using nothing more than my trusty garden spade and re-engineering the pipe to take a more direct route over the dam wall, I was able to get it siphoning again.
With the water flowing in the pipe again, the most serious leak which was closer to the house was easy to spot from the water and bubbles emerging from the ground here. After fixing this last leak, I could detect we were still losing water. Though it was much less severe, it was at an unacceptable rate for the little amount of water we had left. But I was able to soon narrow down the location of this last leak using taps. After that, I had to only dig up a small amount of pipe to find exactly where the leak was. Look at the rate that water can come out at. Colossal. I caught a carpet snake on camera, sunning itself in the middle of a winter's day in the garden. And I saw some wild quail in the garden from the kitchen window. Watching them have a dust bath reminds me a lot of my pet chickens I used to have. Sadly, when I got outside to film them, they soon ran away. I use Seamless to create all of the 3D animations in this video, but the animation features still have some loose ends from the upgrade to Seamless 3 that need to be resolved before I'm ready to make a tutorial on animation for Seamless 3. But in the meantime, don't let this stop you from using Seamless, as it's better than ever after all the work that's gone into making diversions reliable. But try to avoid deleting control lines, as this feature is still unreliable. To save a lot of frustration, only use features I show how to use in tutorials written for Seamless 3. I have continued to practice head modeling daily, experimenting with both unrealistic and realistic type faces. Recently, I've been trying smaller eyeballs, 30 millimeters in diameter, which is closer in size to a real human eyeball. I found smaller eyeballs greatly help me make the forehead and the area where the cheekbones are rounder in shape. I've tried a number of times in the past to make Lucy's cheekbone area look less angular when viewing from this orientation, but was always disappointed. I never liked the idea of reducing her eye size, but I'm really pleased with this result. Moving the eyes closer together also helps to make these awkward areas rounder. If we like, we can make the eyes bigger again by scaling everything in the head up, and then squashing other regions back while maintaining the rounded curves of the cheeks and forehead. Theoretically, we can attain the same result of this rounded head with large eyes by instead beginning with increasing the distance between the ears. This bypasses the need to scale the eyeballs or anything else, but the most direct path you take isn't necessarily the best for sparking creativity. Antichinus can be hard to film, as they're usually gone by the time you've got your camera ready. Knowing they love lasagna, I put a used lasagna tray out for them in the evening and left my camera filming with a light shining on the tray. If you don't know what an Antichinus is, you're probably thinking it's a kind of rat or mouse, but because they're a marsupial, genetically, they're closer to kangaroos, koala bears, possums, Tasmanian tigers, etc., than any rodent. Though their head has a cartoonish mouse-like quality, their nose is much more pointed than a real mouse's, and their mouth is very different, much more carnivorous looking. From a distance, one clue that gives them away is how they move. They typically move in short little bursts at a speed that's so fast it's hard for the eye to detect any movement. It can feel as if by magic they keep appearing at a new location at a short distance from where they just were. They also like to hop a lot. I'm so glad the Antichinus have been very active this winter. Not only are they incredibly cute, they keep the mice away and I'm hoping they might protect the garden this season from some of the pests that were a problem last autumn. One thing we've learned about Antichinus is 
they'll entirely eradicate cockroaches from your house, so that's a good reason alone not to poison your pests. Notice the fur on their underside is orange, much the same colour as the lasagna. This is not from the lasagna, they're naturally coloured this way. There are many different kinds of antichinus throughout Australia, with our local type being the lasagna bellied variety.